So this time of year, there's not a whole lot really to talk about or give updates on because one of the most challenging parts about being a beekeeper in winter time is making yourself basically do absolutely nothing. Aside from any chores you have with cleaning up equipment, organizing equipment, and kind of setting an action plan for the next year. Where I am is basically in north central Texas. So if you imagine maybe about 20 minutes south of the Dallas area, normally maybe two or three times a winter we may get some freezing temperatures that last maybe about a week or two weeks at a time. Now, you might think that's a good thing, but in reality, it does introduce some additional problems or challenges because uh, bees don't really go into torpor, that time where they just kind of stay tightly clustered, don't move around and don't cons consume a lot of resources. On one hand, it's good because they have a chance to get out of the hive, to cleanse their gut, uh, to do those things a bit more often, but at the same time, it does mean that they consume more resources. So I'll go out there a few times, uh, usually a couple times a month, just to kind of unstrap and lift the boxes, just to make sure that it feels like there's enough heft. If there's not, then I tend to use dry sugar to feed them during winter. And normally I try and start uh, winter that way, so that initially, they're still consuming the dry feed that I give them and they don't necessarily need to dip into the actual honey stores they have in the box that soon. That's normally how I see it play out here. So the bees are doing a lot of consumption on the dry feed that I put in. I use a combination of just plain dry sugar bricks and then also a recipe for some soft sugar bricks that there's a guy in one of our beekeeping groups named Stan um, that he has this recipe for soft sugar bricks that the bees absolutely love this time of year and they will eat them like crazy. The main reason why I use dry sugar though during winter isn't necessarily just about feed, it's about moisture control. If you've ever had some sugar, like just regular granulated sugar somewhere in a garage or whatever in kind of a humid area, you'll notice over time that it gets solid and clumped up and it's because sugar is what's called hygroscopic, so it absorbs water. If you make dry sugar bricks, or if you try and do the camp sugar method and just put like newspaper and sugar on, on the top bars of your hive going into winter, um, it will absorb moisture. Um, the reason I like that is because I never have an issue with condensation inside of the hive, even when it gets super cold and I have really strongly populated boxes of bees. Uh, because the sugar will absorb most of that moisture. And then that's also beneficial because in order for the bees to use the dry sugar, they need moisture. So that's the main reason I use it right under the, the inner cover is because it absorbs moisture. So beyond that, one of the other things that I'll say that I'm doing right now today, aside from just checking their overall feed levels, is checking the strength of the hives and getting some sort of a sense of which ones are going to make it through winter the most reliably. So for example, the ones that I have at the home yard, um, which is just like one, on one acre of property, just so that y'all know, like our home yard is, I've got nine hives on one acre um, in kind of a, I don't know, semi-rural, it's not in the country, but it's not in the city. I've got nine hives at my home yard. Two perhaps won't make it through winter. Uh, the rest are going strong and we really only have a couple and a half more months of winter to really check feed levels and such on there. Um, so two out of nine, I mean, if it was two out of eight, that would be 25%. So maybe I'm sitting at ish 18, 20% uh, potential loss in my home yard, which as uh, frustrating as it is for a beekeeper to be like, oh, you're going to lose hives every year. I mean, that's, that's never fun. But given that it is not uncommon for you to lose 30 to 50% of your hives over winter, I think those numbers are, are boding pretty well for us. And then when we get to the spring, then we'll look at splitting. But just so you know, like if you've got multiple hives, you should expect that you're going to lose some hives over winter. Um, especially the ones that are kind of small numbers going into the cold and just don't get too disheartened by it. But it's also the reason why if you're just a hobby beekeeper with one or two hives, that can be super unsettling because, you know, you're, you lose one or two hives, which is perfectly normal. You lost all your hives. 
Um, if you've got you know four or five, six hives, and you lose one or two hives, well then at least you're not starting over from scratch. You can just kind of rebuild. Well, I finished checking out a couple more hives. Um, one of one of my tickiest is uh, out by the lake, which is which is kind of funny. It didn't start out that way, um, but whenever that hive really came on strong, then all of a sudden they started getting hyper defensive. So it could be the environment because I know the genetics of that particular colony came from some of the others that I have that are incredibly peaceable. But you know, when uh, when queens mate, they mate with a, a wide variety of drones. And so chances are maybe there was one that was uh, a little more aggressive genetics that she mated with and those bees came on late in the season. So that's a possibility. So next season I'll probably end up uh, requeening that colony just because I don't have time to be dealing with ticky bees. I prefer to be working bees in my bare hands if I'm able. So we'll have to deal with that next season. But I will say though that that colony was super strong. I put it out there last uh, last spring as a nuke. It blew blew up, basically grew into a double deep. Had plenty of honey stored for winter. I did harvest some honey from that hive, which again, if you're starting from a nuke, harvesting honey the first year is not, not typical. Definitely at least not for the area that we're in, but I was able to harvest some honey. I'll also say that the weird thing about the honey I got from that particular hive is that the uh, the location of the colonies out there is right below a pecan tree, and that pecan tree had a lot of honeydew that it was weeping this year. Um, so that was a particularly pronounced issue in this particular area. So I'm fairly certain, while obviously we haven't run it through any like university tests or anything, or state tests, I'm fairly certain that that honey was honeydew. It had a different texture to it, um, a little more, I don't know, slick or viscous. I know that's weird to describe just because honey in general already tends to have those characteristics, right? But sometimes you'll encounter honey that just, I don't know, it has an extra slick property to it. Um, so hard to to really describe what that is. But when you see it, you see it, you recognize what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, checked those colonies out there and they're going strong. Even the one that I expected to perhaps be a little bit weak uh, at this point in winter, surprisingly uh, doing very well. So that's good to see. So right now, from my current projections, which granted anything could happen at any point in time. You can have losses that are surprising for whatever reason, but for all of the hives that I've looked at, I think I'm probably looking at coming through winter with about a 15 or 20% loss rate, which is pretty great. Um, that's easy to bounce back from either by splits or by some of the, the swarms that we'll catch next season, or even perhaps a couple of the removals that we do. So, like I said, it's uh, one of the biggest challenges this time of year for being a beekeeper is doing nothing. So that's all I have for you today. I just thought I'd get on here, give a little bit of a, a bee chat on some of the things that we see, uh, the things that were on my mind for the day. I appreciate you watching Magby Buzzin. This is Ryan McElhaney subscribe, hit that like or subscribe button so that you'll see more content as we create it. We appreciate you checking in.